Good morning, welcome to the uh, async video session for our week one class lecture. And um, you will see that we are um, perhaps going to be covering some items that we've already talked in week two. And uh, this is in support of the class lecture that is available in week one uh, for our class 9306. And if you do have any questions about any of the content, or any of the video as we as you go through the material, please feel free to reach out to me through the inbox in Canvas with a course material. And if I see that there's value of sharing and communicating uh, the questions and the answer to the rest of the students, I will do uh, with the class as well when we meet on week three. So, uh, well, thank you for those of you that have chosen to look at the um, at the async video for this class. Uh, given that we had a holiday and uh, that the semester also started um, a bit later in the semester, we uh, did not have the opportunity to cover in class all of the material for class for week one and week two. So I thought that you would benefit from having a bit of an intro for me uh, for some of the slide and some of the content uh, as well. I will not be covering every element in this presentation, but I will be uh, covering where I believe that is the most relevant for your class. And uh, and if you have questions about anything that I have covered or not covered, please reach out. So lesson one was to talk to you and share with you a little bit of history about human resources, uh, databases, and, uh, and then um, HRS in general as well, which we have covered in our first class on week two, but uh, I will be happy to go through some more details with the uh, with this presentation. And, um, and then I'm gonna be sharing with you just a brief overview and history of technology that are available in, uh, in human resources. And uh, the learning objectives is also mentioned in this class, in this slide, but uh, it will be up to you to review on your own. So what is human resources? Well, obviously I do think that you have a good sense of what human resources is, uh, given that you're a part of a certificate program. But when we think of human resources, we often think of people. So the people can be HR special, the specialist, the HR people, right? We can think of employees, and uh, and then we can think of all the staff that is involved. And when I say employees, we can even break it down by managers, people that manage people. We can think of trainers that train people as well. So obviously there are some sub subdivision within the people who work for a company and the department that are responsible for managing resources related to employees. So nowadays, what you will see in a lot of businesses, the HR group is not called a people. So uh, I've heard chief of people officer. I've heard, and you will see that there's some chief people, chief HR, chief people. So I think we're trying to connect more with the people and individual as opposed to human resources. Human resources might sound a little bit dry. The people, I think is a lot more friendly. Uh, and you will see that there's a trend of now calling HR people, the people uh, department. Human resources is an umbrella term used to describe the management, development of employees. So we hire, and then once we hire, we need to manage, right? Once we manage, we need to sometime train, we need to feed, give feedback, and, uh, and then we promote as well our people or some time we have to let go, unfortunately. So the HRS systems, the best system is meant to cover all of these stages. So you can think of these as the stages of an employee uh, throughout their journey with a company. And, uh, and then as HR, you may be uh, more involved with a particular step than other, but the chief of people needs to be very well aware of all the steps and all the stages. And then there's also all the legal aspect, right? legal regulations that you need to be aware of as well. So they see, the people department will see all things related to managing an organization, human capital. So I think this is very important, human capital, you're managing the people. So uh, we will discuss more about what kind of value is HR now adding more a day. Now that we have HRIS, HRIS has been around for a little bit for quite a while now, for about 20 years for some businesses. So it's not new for some businesses. Um, you will see HR, we'll talk about people, we'll talk about performance, information, work. Often the information is where we see intranet, right? How do we communicate with our employee? What do we need to communicate to our employee? So you will see that there'll be some portals. 
that will have information that is HR specific. So you may have policies, and maybe this is where the portal gives you access to HRIS as well, where we have the self-serve functionality as well that we've discussed in our uh, in our first class together. And, uh, and then we talked about in one of the class exercises, so one of the questions I asked you was, what kind of activities are adding, uh, what kind of activities are there when we think of HR? And, uh, and then I share with you that there will be a way that we can actually categorize those activity. So you will see in the book, the transactional activities. So transactional activities and think of transaction as a number, something that can be counted. Uh, administrative, the day-to-day -day transact transactions such as record keeping, so employee record keeping, the payroll, the employee benefits, the vacations, perhaps, compensation as well. And uh, when we hear a transaction, we hear emails, getting emails, getting phone calls for uh, from your stakeholder, from the employees that need help with any uh, transactional activities that you may be facing. They're costless and most time consuming uh, HR activities, they cost and they are very time consuming. So our goal is to leverage HRIS to handle right those activities so that you can add more value, which is another type of activities that we will review. Most HR departments spend 65 to 75% of their time. There's, we're not saying it's not important, but when you look at the value that it's adding to the business, it's a must do. It has to be done, right? It's work that has to be done. Does it have to be done by individual? Could it be done by technology? That's really the question. So uh, traditional activities, the traditional, so we've talked about uh, transactional, traditional activities. Um, those are activities that will relate to how do we help planning, recruiting, selecting, training, the compensation element, and the performance management. So we're starting to add a little bit more value to the business. There's still activities that need to be done, but you will see that there's some HRI system that will do just that. They will help to facilitate, automate, facilitate those activities uh, that are very important to the business. And uh, most HR departments spend 15 to 30% of their time on these. I think those activities are shared, right? With the hiring managers, with managers, so as a manager, I did planning, I, do, I did recruiting, I did selection. In fact, HR would help me for initial selection, initial interview, and then the training. They may help me with training, or I will do some training, or I will facilitate training. Um, the compensation discussion would be done with employees. I would participate in the performance management. Most of it would be done by me. HR would actually remind me that my performance reviews are due. But all VPs, all directors would actually align on the corporate objective. So when we think of performance management, it will be coming from the corporate objectives. At Rogers, all of this was automated. So we had all of a performance plan into a system, which I don't know if it was an HRS system or something that we actually build. And then the corporate objectives would go to all VPs, all VPs, and then to the teams at the team level. And then uh, all of this will be um, will help us with salary increases, bonus payout, and it will be very consistent so that we are aligned. So HR is involved to make sure that people do their job, but the actual performance review, the actual performance management, is done by the hiring manager. So perhaps this could be the explanation as to why maybe HR is not spending as much time on these activities versus the other ones, the transactional that we've looked. When we think of transformational activities, those are activities that will actually add value to the business. And I think that's very important to uh, highlight. This is where we move away from all the transactional to actually helping the business to answer questions. Who should we be hiring? Do we have to be worried about uh, employee leaving the company? Do we have to be worried about employee leaving the company or people taking retirement? What are the, the trends that we see in terms of diversity? What are the challenges that bigger organizations are seeing that we need to know that we need to start working today so that we're prepared in five years? We have no surprises. Think of COVID. So now COVID came to everybody at the same time. 
but I'm hoping that HR is playing an active role in helping and preventing something to uh, to happen again, like COVID, and uh, and be better prepared and better equipped. This is completely different than what they would normally do when it comes to transactional or uh, traditional activities. When you do add value as an HR organization, now you're seeing as adding value and versus costing money to the business, you're actually helping the business to be a better business, a better, better business. You're improving the business. You're not just doing what is expected, you're improving the business. You're helping the business to be more competitive. You're spending time where it makes a difference, right? So, uh, and you leave the technology and automation, do the things that anybody can do that are repetitive, that don't really add value. They just there because you need to have employees and people need to be paid. People need to have benefits. People need to have compensation, but that is adding no value to the business outside the, the to, or even to the consumer. The consumer is still thinking they're still getting a product for Apple, right? So the product is being built, the products are being sold, the product are being distributed. Now what you're trying to do is you try to make sure that there are people to actually be able to build the products, people that, are, um, that people will be motivated, people will be happy, people will stay as well. And also forecasting. So there's predicting, the notion of predicting, and forecasting. We are going to talk some more about these notions in one of our class, but you're ahead, you're ahead of the day today. So you would have people that will still new, do transactional and traditional, but you'll have a set of individuals, now perhaps it'll be you, that will actually do help uh, make adding value to the business. Unfortunately, we only spend five to 15% of our time on those activities. And when we think of activities, so cultural or organizational change, this is critical for even HRIS implementation. As I said yesterday, from the get-go, 20% only of people will be in favor of a change. 30% will resist, 50% are in offense. So change management, structural realignment. I have done so many realignments from teams so the teams used to be like this, right? Very, very um, hierarchy and uh, very, very top down. Nowadays, this is gone and we're actually going more like these structure. HR has participated in all of those initiatives because we're changing jobs, we're changing descriptions, we're changing responsibility, we're changing accountability. And, uh, and that's very innovative and that can also be very scary for some employees. So when you spend time on this as HR, or if you have less time that you need to spend on the typical activities, the transactional activities or the traditional activities, then that frees you up to do more of adding value to the business better team structure so that there's more collaboration, better team structure, there's more communication, better team structure that there's more effectiveness. We are able to better deliver, we work better together and we deliver better product and we're happier and we stay. So there are a lot of implications and this is where you add value. Now suddenly you're making a really big difference to a business and the business we wanna keep you and the business we wanna hire more of you too. So uh, human resources management, HRM, I don't think I need to go in a lot of details, but I invite you to, uh, to review the intersection of human HRM and information technology. So we talked in one of the video yesterday, HRM, HRIS, they are interchangeably used and uh, I use them as being one of the same. So it's all related, HRIM, HRIS are related. There's obviously an IT component, but IT will support a project, a HRIS system, but they don't own the technology, they don't own the process, they don't own the business. You own, you are the main sponsor 
domain user and often the main sponsor of the HRI system project will be the chief of people the chief of HR. But you will need IT to help you because they will help you with implementation of the product, the bandwidth, the connectivity, the technology, and also monitoring and making sure that the product is up to date and up and running. Uh, and HRM function is one of the last to be automated due to its data and uh, intensiveness. There is a lot of data. In fact, there's a lot of data. There's a lot, it has to be secured, it has to be uniform, it has to be um, accessible, it has to be clean. We're gonna spend more time on data, but it's very, very sensitive, right? It's sensitive. Often it's very sensitive data. There's also regulations. There's employee, there's date of birth or salary. You don't want suddenly to people to gain access to salary inside a company, let alone outside your company. Now, nearly all large organizations have implemented system to support HR processes and functions, but you still have some that haven't. Now, I will say some are vendor solutions and some are probably um, home grown. So that means they've actually designed them. They've actually built them. Now, when I came to Sunwing, we had about 200 solutions, HR solutions, digital solutions, marketing solutions. We, we, we built all of those solutions. We were locked with a big monster. So uh, for the two years that I was there, we were just, we were spending a lot of time on rethinking all of our technology. HR was helping us rethinking our technology and, and stopping building and having to work with more with vendors. So you are not in business. That's the other thing. You're not in business to build technology. You're not in the HR business to build HR technology. You want to work with vendors. You want to work with technology. And there are technologies that are affordable depending on your budget, depending on your bus, uh, business, uh, your size, your company size, your budget. So uh, we're going to speak more about this in our class. But the trend is not to build. The trend is to hire or work with a partner like Oracle or Workday or SAP success factors, some of you are, or ADP or Ceridian, uh, to work with people that that's what they do for a living so that you can really focus on what you do best, the planning, the strategy, the recruiting, managing people, helping managers to be better managers, do the performance reviews, right? So HRS are now used for online recruitment. We talk about uh, online recruitment. It's, step, it's, it's kind of a stage one, right, of, a, of an employee. But initially they are candidates and then they move on to employee and actually start with a job requisition. So these are entities. You can think of these as entities. Job requisition is entity. Think of it, it's an object, right? An entity or an object. And when you design system, when you design databases, you need to think about those systems. You need to think about those entities and how they're connected, right? So you have these entities here and they're all floating around and they need to be connected. So, uh, and we do this, when we design a system, we do this. And often the system has hundreds, hundreds of those entities and they all have to be connected. Um, and uh, they all need to be um, accessible by whomever needs to be able to have access to them. So think of a job acquisition, uh, think of the list of candidates, think of the employee and then the employee when you think of an employee, the employee has data, right? That not everybody has access to. Salary, uh, date of birth. Maybe I don't have access to someone's salary or date of birth, but I can see who they are, their names. And in fact, often you will see that on the, on the repository of an employee, if for the phone system, maybe the phone system and the employees is the same information that is coming from your main employee databases but you just see their phone number because you can communicate to them internally. But maybe it's the same table, the same data table, but you only see what you're supposed to, or this solution or this technology only see what it's supposed to see too. So we do use online recruiting, we use selection, we use HRS for selection. I give you that sometimes there's not assessment, uh, managing employee records, training benefits and more. So we are gonna be speaking a lot more about this system uh, as we go through the semester. An HRS system, again, is used to acquire, store, manipulate, analyze. So manipulate is doing reports. 
right? Uh, retrieve and distribute information regarding an organization human resources to support human resource management and managerial decisions. So it's data that we're inquiring, it's info that we inquire about people. There's also a process element. All of this data is available within a process or a, a task. I'm a hire manager, I want to do my performance review, I need a list of my employees, and I need to know who needs to have a review. So my goal is to see who do, who needs, do I need to do a review for. Uh, as HR, perhaps I want to see a list of all the people that have had the performance review. I want to see a list of people that are still outstanding. I want to see maybe a list of people that have not taken notifications so that I can tell the CEO that we are at risk, people are not taking invitation, and maybe this is why they're tired. So I have different needs, but we are looking pretty much at the same data. We are looking at the same employee data that has multiple rows of data, but me, maybe I'm looking at this piece of data only. Someone else may actually be looking at other piece of data. Maybe the CEO is looking at this little piece of data and this little piece of data and this little piece of data, and then he brings all of his data into a report. Maybe someone else is looking at all of the red piece of data. But it's all coming from one source. That's the ultimate goal of HRI system, okay? Uh, but there's a process around these data or a specific goal that someone is trying to do in the business. It's HR, it can be the hiring manager, it can be the CEO. So now you're gonna see it's very redundant. The people, so me, I wanna do something X. I want to actually create a new job acquisition to get more people to fill for a role, right? So there's jobs, job is a, an entity right? We have jobs and then they have description, title, compensation, skills, competency you need. Job is another object. I said we have many, many objects sometimes that often they're connected. And then you have this big thing that are an employee. But when you think of it, the employee will be connected, will have a job, right? If you think of the column for job and what are the jobs that they had? So this is data and database and how things are related. We're gonna do some exercises about data, but it's there, HRS system is there to support a people, someone who's trying to do something X inside a process. And in that process, there are data. There's data being saved, data being collected, data being looked at. And the data is a piece of data doesn't really mean anything by itself, but the information that comes with it is more important. And that will be something that we are gonna review in this class too, in this specific PowerPoint. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think I need to spend much time on this specific slide, but you can read on your own. Let me, uh, HR, HRS benefits. Okay, so we talked about some benefits yesterday. We're just gonna repeat a few. Well, there's data now that is available for everybody and it's accurate data. Hopefully it's accurate data, it's clean data and people are actually using and entering the data. So there's automation that will take place. Uh, that means less emails, less missing deadlines, less missing dates so that people are getting their performance review on time. People are getting the salary increase on time. So it makes us work more effectively and more accurately because we can all look at the same employee data real time and not have to call someone and say, can you send me this? And then you never know what they'll be sending you. Uh, providing accurate and timely. So we've said, right, when we're setting up the stage, we have until Friday to get a lot of answers to a big report. Make better decision. That's really key. Go back to our setting up the stages. That's really the intent, okay? So we're trying to help your manager to make better this decision or the business. And then it's free up. It will free up some time spent on doing tasks manually. So the traditional, the transactional and traditional to now become more of a strategic role, transformation role, being ahead of the business when it comes to people and people management. So those are the main objectives and that you want to achieve when you do the HRIS. Okay, I'm not going to go in more details about EHRM, but please read through. Uh, 
And, uh, and then same thing, advantages of HRS. We've already talked about some of the advantages. Disadvantages um, and uh, advantages. Okay, so larger company will take get greater benefits, probably because they're expensive technology. So that means they're gonna have more saving and more benefits from having a technology. It does not mean that the smaller company will not benefit, but I kind of told you that at some point you need, and we will do this, you will need to do a cost analysis of your implementation and with, that's part of your group project too. So you need to see, is the return on my investment positive or negative or flat? What am I saving and what am I getting better? What am I getting more by implementing HRS system? The bigger the company, you would hope that the bigger the saving will be, but the cost will be higher too. But there's a threshold at some point that if you don't have a, a certain volume of employees and the vendors will be honest and will tell you too, uh, it's, there's no point, there may be no point to go to an HRS system because it would be more costly. Uh, performance management may be reduced to numbers and data and soft skills such as teamwork may be eluded. I think this is something you can control within your own, uh, with your management and the management people. Uh, it's important to have data and soft skills, but I think any good managers will still stay close to their team. So it's, I didn't feel that this was, the HR system was preventing me by, by being connected with my team and no, in fact, I think I know more. Uh, so I'm not too concerned. Privacy concerns. Employee and applicants may feel that their data could be accessed. I think people are becoming a lot more comfortable with data. If they see value in the South Serve, if they see value that they can do more things on their own and not have to pick up the phone and it's more effective, they, the, the values will outweigh the, uh, the risk of, uh, of moving to uh, HRS. And, uh, and I will tell you, now what is happening is a lot of, uh, a lot of, data is actually being sent by email to Excel, which is even worse, right? Cloud, so you may hear that cloud technology maybe are not as safe. I will tell you that's a myth. The cloud technology are very safe. And you have thousands of engineers that work for all of these big cloud companies that are dedicating their time, which is much better using a cloud technology than building your own technology that often are not even in safe environments. And I have seen that in past uh, my past life in businesses, big company, big brands, where their environments were not even safe environment. So the cloud technology is definitely a good job. Employee resistant to using electronic performance monitoring. I think you need to have a policy as to what you're collecting, what you're not collecting, and what you're collecting. Uh, there is sensitivity around this particular item, and we will talk about this in one of our class. But at the end of the day, it will be a business decision. And uh, you are employees of businesses, right? But this is where you can add value as HR to see what do other companies do when it comes to performance and monitoring and what people do online. What is acceptable, not acceptable? But in all cases, you still need to reveal to your employee what it is that you do, what it is that you're monitoring, you're not doing, and why. Uh, and, uh, and then you just have to have a policy as well. Okay, types of HRS are generally categorized in terms of what level of the organization the system support, daily operations, managerial, executive level. I will say all levels will be using touching your HRS system, whether it's the CEO, whether it's gonna be your HR, whether it's gonna be your employee as well. At some point it will affect pretty much everybody in the business. I will not go in a lot of details about pre-world and the social issues and uh, to the 80s, but uh, what I can tell you is Starting from the 80s to early 90s, uh, there was a strong focus on cost reduction through automation. So that is probably why businesses were very interested in hearing about automation at the time. And, uh, and then HRS was positioning themselves as helping with automation and also decision making. And, uh, and then there was a change of focus in employee administration, like transactional to employee development. How do we develop people to be better people? HR department came under pressure to adopt the much needed technology and uh, development of client server computing, which enable organization to distribute employee information to multiple locations throughout their organization, allowing manager to make better decisions, but you were tied to a, uh, to a PC slash computer. So the technology was only available through a PC or a computer at your work, at work. So keep that in mind. And, uh, and then we're talking the early 19s. Then the ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning, uh, big solutions. And I think someone yesterday mentioned in class and the strategic of HR as a, 
uh, as a adding value uh, uh, division within a business, which was also new back at the time from the 90s to 2010. This is when the first HRIS appeared. So we're talking about globalization. We are connected, we are interdependent and interconnected. And we now have businesses that are not even from, uh, from our home country that are established and they're hiring people here and vice versa. We are doing business everywhere. We're very global and how do we connect those employees, right? To maybe someone who's in USA, but they have employees in Japan and Vietnam. So they need to know who they are uh, so that they can support them. Internet came, hyper competition and uh, realization that employee is hard to imitate. It's hard to copy employee and your capital uh, asset is so important, intellectual capital. How do we keep, how do we keep our people it with us, right? And people have so many options, it's easy to leave. It's easy to leave and go to a place with more money and better salaries. Strategic HRM became popular, best fit approach to fit between HR and strategic capabilities in business process, the implement strategy where HR contributes to competitive advantage. So HRS will give you a competitive advantage and you will uh, perform better, outperform your competitor and do better. So uh, introduction of HR metrics. So now we can really measure and see what value and how much does HR cost to a business? And how much money do we bring and how much money we uh, we bring? Why will be sharing with you with more HR metrics in the class? Um, and then the, we talk, we'll talk about some software vendors, developer, integrating data. So the data exists today, you have data. And if you move to a new HRS system, you will need to know where's the data and how do we now move this data into a new system and a new technology? Very relevant. And, uh, and then the best of brief, where organization try to purchase the best system for each functional area. So uh, we'll, we'll talk some more about the best of brief. There are some HRS system that do all, there are some system that don't do everything. So what do you do then with the other uh, component of HR that are not supported by a system are very critical. Nowadays, the cloud technology, I have mentioned the cloud technology and the mobile technologies are uh, ubiquitous, so everywhere. And some of you have shared that some of your vendors like SuccessFact or ACP, I believe have mobile app. Yes, people are on the go. We are highly dependent on these phones as you know, for as an employee, as a manager, as a hiring manager, or as a chief of people. If I have a dashboard that I can access through my phone as I'm commuting is even better. And again, the technology has a lot to not be locked into an office and all locked into a computer. Uh, mobility is everywhere. We also use social media. We're going to talk more about social media when it comes to employee management, but we use social media for recruiting. LinkedIn is a social media platform. So we have quickly quick access to applicants and often businesses will put their, their jobs on LinkedIn. And then in a matter of hours, they have hundreds of applicants that they need to sort uh, as well. So the challenge has become having a lot of applicants and, uh, and then our challenge is how do we really identify the stars applicants and then sending this uh, to the, you know, to the manager as the top candidates and be able to take quick actions on them. Maybe there's automation too, right? That uh, will say, uh, book your first interview. And then you have interviews that are connected to my hiring manager calendar. And I have a quick way to say that, yes, I do want to set up an interview with those people. And it's all done through technology. And I don't even have to talk to them. Um, and uh, I would like to think that some of the HRS system are already doing that. If they're not, then perhaps they can hire us for ideas. Um, so HRI system, as we said, there are people, there is people, technology, and process. So the tech, people, and all of this is connected. And I will even say that there's also data in the middle. We can think that data is in the middle that we are all trying to view, right? We're all trying to have a bit of a view on that data as well, the same set of data. It's at the core of uh, the HR environment plus other department, I would say. We're not just, it's not just HR using it. Then the organization environment, the global environment, 
And uh, the environment is very critical as well. So the environment may be may facilitate implementation in some, the environment may make it more difficult, and then the environment can be a different country, right? So different regulations. Most HRIS are very well aware of all the different regulations that exist in all the countries, and uh, and they will uh, they will easily allow you to accommodate as well in terms of what you want to collect and what you need to collect and what you want to collect. Think of a vendor as a strategic partner that will also educate you in the process of. Now, I've been talking about HRIS system as if you don't have an HRIS system, but you may, and I will say, a lot of companies have an HRIS system. So they're probably in mode of optimization nowadays, but perhaps you maybe want, maybe you want to replace your HRIS system as well. So uh, 20 years ago, when the HRIS system were new, there was a huge gain. So all businesses that were introducing the HRIS system gain had big gains, right? Big gains. So by gains, financial productivity as well. Let's say in the 2000s. But if you're thinking of you're in the 2021s now, and uh, and then perhaps you want to, and you still uh, you want to. Uh, uh, continue to upgrade your system, then your gains, the gains are not as big, right? They're not going to be as big or as significant versus someone who's actually introducing a, a, a system today. So if you don't have a system today, and then you introduce in 2021, and you have a new HRIS system to your business, you will have big gains, big gains, productivity again. But in 10 years, your gain will also going to diminish over time. So your initial gain is a lot higher than uh, having or being uh, consuming an HRS system in, you know, in, a, in 10 years later or 20 years later uh, versus someone who's actually doing a brand new implementation. Uh, which I think makes sense. So it, it becomes then harder to justify your investment, but hopefully you're still saying that you're more productive, you are keeping your employees and you are able to do more with less. Um, and uh, and then the intent of HRI system is never really to, uh, to have less people so that you can actually let go people. The goal is that people will do better things and things that will add more business value. And I will tell you, I have real, rarely seen in 20 years um, a company being able to actually let go a lot of people after implementing technology. It's you're changing what people do. You're changing their job. You're changing the nature of their job and you're making yourself a better company because you can actually think forward. You can do more strategic thinking and you're not always in reacting. You're actually being proactive. And I will say that is probably the biggest benefit of when you actually implement. So you go from being reactive to becoming more proactive. And I will tell you, this is why Amazon, this is why Walmart, this is why these big businesses are doing well. They have the resources and they are in the re proactive mode. Everybody else and a lot of people are here. They're fighting, they're just working with urgent, urgencies. You know, they're extinguishing fires and they can barely keep up. They're, they're drowning, they're on the water. So this, think of this scenario here. Do you think employee want to stay? People are leaving, right? People are leaving the company here. People are staying because they feel accomplished. They feel accomplished. They feel that they're doing good work. So you see how it also has an effect on people, accomplished, motivated, and, uh, and then doing good work, it's manageable also. So you have to think of beyond the, 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 the cost, the hard cost and the, uh, the dollar amount. There are many, many other benefits to HRIS system as well in terms of employees and probably retention and keeping them. So that was chapter one. In chapter two, we're moving more to databases concept and application in HRIS system. And, um, and then we already talked about data. So if you remember, I just share with you, when we think of an HRS system, 
And uh, we are going to do a, a class that's the size about data next week. So we have people, we have technology, and we have processes. And, uh, and then everybody is connected and you can think of data. We all try to have a view on that data. And the people are, there are multiple level of people. You are one of them, right? And the technology, there's multiple technology. And then one of them is HRIS and it's all connected and different processes, right? Hiring, managing, uh, performance. Everything we do is about this. So now when it comes to data, we're gonna spend a little bit more data, time on data. And I share with you that the data has, um, has certain components that you can think of when we think of a data. So the first one, data, information, and knowledge. So data, information, and knowledge. Data and information and knowledge are not the same, they're different. So the data is a fact. They're more about the facts, uh, transactions, events. The book really gives you a lot more detail. So I'm gonna be uh, going on surface. Uh, but you can think of hiring a new employee. And uh, so an employee, employee has a set of data attached to them, usually in a table with multiple roles, thousands of roles. And uh, a piece of data can be salary. So remember about our employee. So this is our employee object. Object, entity, and then it has roles. Rolls of piece of data, and then salary is one of them, right? Date of birth, location. There's multiple things, and then everybody is interested in some pieces, not all pieces. And then they want to be able to have it view. They actually want to be able to arrange it the way that they want. And then people have certain people have access to certain piece of data. Some have all data. Some have some, and and uh, you want it to be safe and secure. Now. This data here doesn't tell you anything, right? You just know that you have people with salary and how long they've been. Let's see, uh, number of years, right? So number of years is a fact. So we know for this employee, the number of years that they've been with a company. But when you look at all the number of years that people have, maybe you're gonna see that people are leaving. That is a piece of information. But this table here doesn't tell you how long do people stay? And do we have people that are leaving that have not really been long for the company? That is information slash knowledge. So it's on top of the data. So the data is the facts and the information and the knowledge is the story. What is the data telling us? When I look at termination or when I look at someone's, how long have someone has and the data we are in time today, I may see that we are leaving, losing more people than we're hiring people. The data by itself is not going to tell me that when I look at the employee data, but when I look at all employee data, now I have a story that is telling me, be concerned or do not be concerned because the people are leaving or they're not leaving. The information is the interpretation that we do of that data, and uh, it's helping to uh, for making a decision, measuring an employee performance as well. So if we see, so your employee, if I go back to my employee, and, uh, and then we have a, a column or a row for this data that says uh, performance for P. And maybe we see that it's actually bad or it's a two, two needs improvement. Then we know that there's a story. By itself, two means nothing, but we know that two usually means needs improvement. Then you're gonna say, can I see all the people that all have a two for needs improvement? And then what is the percentage of all of those people in the company? Then I may see, so all P's and then all twos. And then I go this, and then I can say, now this is time zero. We are at time zero. So we are September 21. And then I wanna say, what about, what was it in September 20? What was it in September 19? Then maybe I see all my twos is actually 5% of all of my employees, maybe I'm gonna see in 2020, it was 3% and maybe 19, it was 2%. What am I learning? So I'm learning that I've gone from 2% in 19s, I've gone to uh, 3% in 
in 20 and in 21, I'm at 5%. It's going up. This is bad. This is story, right? So it's looking beyond the data and building story. Imagine if you had time to do this as HR and you'll say, we have a big challenge. Too often businesses don't do this. They have no time. They don't do this. So this is what we want you to have a chance to be able to do and have the data real time and do it fast. Imagine if you don't have an HR system and you have to figure it out. How many emails you have to send instead of going to a dashboard and login and be able to pull that information and build a report just for the way that you need as well. So knowledge is using data and it's not information that has been given. It's knowledge about how, how or what, what is the story? And then you know that maybe there's something that you need to do to fix. You may not know what, but at least you know that there's something that you need to be investigating. And it's not gonna tell you why you don't know, but this is for you to find out. Why are people not performing? Then you may want to also isolate it. Is this with a specific department? Is it in a specific city? Is it in a specific location? This is where now more questions are popping into you. And the data will, you should be able to extract all of the data that you want from that all databases because you will have a role for locations. You'll have a role for departments. Then you're building models. And this is what some of the technology that SAP have done. So a lot of these HRIS systems are connected to your bigger, maybe databases, ERPs as well, or this is where you have integrations and connections. So you're still in building stories and you're proactive and you are before it happens and before it's too late, okay? So database management system, DBMS, so usually often those HRS system, okay, they come with databases. And if they don't, they will say, well, we first need to have a databases. So we need to have something, or we need to have a data strategy or a data vision. So this is where you start building data strategy, vision. Let me tell you, I worked at Sunway for two years and Sunway wanted me to do customer relationship management, better personalization, and manage customers. This is what they wanted me to do. Business, one, two, three. We discovered that we had zero concept or entity for customers. And we've hired a firm to help us to define what should be a customer, what should be the customer uh, the concept of customer at Sunway. And then being able to communicate everything about a customer to whoever needs it. So we're back again to our people, our technology and our process. We realized that we had no data lake, database, data vision, data strategy. And that was a starting point. So we couldn't do customer relationship management. I did not even know where to go to manage and who to manage. I could not do personalization because I had no idea what people were buying. So if you think of when you do your personalization and I look at my data row and all of my employees, the, you would have a, a, a role for products. What are they buying? Right. And, uh, and then I could use this to do personalization, but I was not, I had no access to this. So uh, that is a very good example. That, and we've said, to be able to do all of these things for Eve, for digital, we need to have a data, data, the data available. And Eve needs to be able to go in and consume it. Eve needs to be able to look at it. Guess else when we say technology. When you think of the technology, so you have Eve as a VP, maybe you have HR, as a uh, as a rep, we want to see who our customers are. Maybe we have the website. Maybe we are a mobile app. So we think of people, but there's also technology that wants to be able to consume that data, right? So the customer goes to the website. 
then the website detects a customer and the website will say, I will show the products Eve likes when he visits my site. So it doesn't have to be a human being. It can also be a technology who's consuming our role of data about this customer when we know he's visiting us. So, uh, and the web is a consumer of the data. The mobile app is a consumer of the data. The email that you send to your customer is also a consumer of that data. But to do this, you need to have a vision and a strategy. So uh, in terms of data and databases, they're very critical. And often you will hear a lot of businesses have a lot of data. You just don't know how, what to do with it. It's everywhere, it's dispersed, it's in silo, it's not clean, it's not consumable, not shareable, not seen, not secure. So uh, that will be uh, quite a lot of. Now, what we try to do with a, a good data in a good database, I'm not gonna talk about what how bad they were in the past, and uh, but what are some of the qualities? So I invite you to read the slides that I'm actually skipping. And, uh, and then we've already talked about entities. So entities, employee, a job, a requisition. Uh, we talk about performance, maybe is an entity too, right? Uh, blah, blah, blah. There's many entities that you need to define that you need to agree on. Promotions, right? So we have promotions. Then attributes. So the attributes, think of the attributes as the cells, the roles. What is inside an employee? What is inside a job requisition? A job requisition has a job title, department, uh, job description, qualification, competencies, right? a salary attached, band, salary band. So each entity has a set of entities or objects that are connected. Then you have tables, tables and rows as well, right? So maybe you have employee one, employee two, employee three, and then this is you have your entire databases as well. You are not going to be building databases, but we're going to do an exercise so that you have question yourself and understand and appreciate what's involved when we think of data and databases. But you're not going to be building an entire database. There's no way. But you understand that it's critical. And we're going to do quick, fun exercises uh, in pair. There are relationship, relationship ships between entities, right? We have entities, entities entities and they are connected and I need to be able to move them. I need to be able to view what I want to view too and only view certain things, right? I need to be able to move them and see what happens. Uh, they are connected, but they are all, all, they're all separate that I can view and just view one entity if I want. But there are relationships that they're not static, they're very dynamic. So I think that's important. They're very, very dynamic. And I can do queries on the database. So maybe I say, show me all employees, right? We already talked about, show me all employees that lives in Oakville. Show me all employees that have a performance too. Show me all employees that had, uh, that had no promotion in the last year as well. I can ask all these questions in a dynamic databases by looking at all these same data from the same data and the same data set, regardless of who I am, where I am, provided that I'm giving access and I have authority on those fields. So that's the ultimate goal too. The queries do not store the data. The data is in database, but I'm searching, I'm fetching, the data as well. And uh, and then this, the book goes through uh, the type of queries that are farm, uh, I'm not too concerned, and then MS access. The MS access is what we are going to do. Uh, there are small exercises and then designing a MS access database as well. So that will be a, a little cost and cost exercise that we will do in pairs. So you don't need to worry about that. But what you may want to do is make sure that you're clear on the notion that 
we have the data is attached to a set of information that you need, right? Obviously, but think of entities and maybe attributes. So employee, and when we say attributes, what defines an employee, right? So maybe you start thinking of what is an employee, then you'll be able to map this to a piece of data, this to a piece of data. And, uh, and then group related fills into tables, determine the primary keys for each fill. Okay, when we say a primary key for fill, fill, then when we say the employee, what is unique about an employee that we can say is the primary key in a business? And that may vary from businesses to businesses. So you're gonna hear, and I think HR system, often they'll think of an employee number. And when you start at the business, this is unique to you, right? And this is probably what most businesses are using, the employee number. No one else has the same employee number. So that you know that when you look at all employees, databases, you have employee one, you have employee two, you have employee three, and those are unique. No one, nobody has the same employee. And then each employee has the set of roles and, uh, and uh, columns and then attributes. So all entities usually have their own unique uh, key. So think of a job requisition. It has a number too, and it's unique. This is how they build. Uh, think of uh, I don't know, promotions, if that's relevant or jobs, jobs, jobs will have unique job numbers as well, perhaps. So you don't need to worry about this, but think about the employee. Uh, if this is what you would wanna think about the, uh, the class exercise that we will do. And we're gonna be spending more time next week on uh, asking ourselves these questions. And then uh, obviously we have to think about how all these entities are related to one another, right? Which we've talked, everything is connected. And there is not one, recipe. There are multiple recipes, but the HRS will, Vander, will give you examples of what do others do. And the thing that you want to make sure that you want to make sure that it's scalable, easy to maintain, and, uh, and then easy to consume. Those will be qualities. But the vendors have expertise doing this. And often these vendors actually work with partners that are database experts when it comes to the database. They may not even be the expert in databases and they will involve someone to actually build the database. So in my big project at Sunwing, when we were looking and we said, we have no data about consumer. We have no knowledge about consumer. We have no concept of customer. We were working with a company called Salesforce, which is a huge customer relationship management or management system. They don't have expertise necessarily per se in building databases, they had partners. So we had a partners, they work, they brought out the partners to help us define data strategy, the data vision, the data lake, the data warehouse, data lake, you're gonna hear about that. So, uh, and this is now a day very typical where the partners will partner, the founders will partner with the people that that's what they do best so that they have the best solution, the best technology for you as well. Okay, so this is data and this is the first deck for week one. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the session and, uh, and then I will uh, be producing a similar video for our week two deck class lecture. And if you do have any questions about this deck, please feel free to reach out to me and I will be more than happy to answer your question and discuss them in class if need be as well.